The War with Grandpa, read aloud by Mrs. Carter. Chapter 34 War's End I couldn't believe I had slept peacefully through the rest of the night, but there was the time on my clock radio, 8.30 in the morning. I lay back in my bed and tried to listen to the house. There were stirrings from some place downstairs. Mom was probably up by now. Saturday was her supermarket day. She usually took Dad along to help her, and Jenny and me if she wanted, if we wanted to go. She was in the kitchen now. I heard the sound of the pot cabinet under the stove slamming shut. She was probably beginning to prepare Saturday morning breakfast of French toast or pancakes. I heard the water running in my parents' bathroom on the second floor. That meant Dad was up and washing. Then I heard what I'd been listening for. Uneven footsteps sounded on the stairs as Grandpa came limping up to see me. I waited. There was a knock on the door. Come on in, Grandpa, I called out. The door opened and Grandpa was there. He had one hand covering his mouth, but his eyes looked awfully angry. He came into the room sideways, his face turned toward the window and away from me. My thief are missing, he said. I stared at him. What? My thief, he said. You are my thief, aren't you? I got up out of bed. As I did that, Grandpa turned his back to me. Oh, look at me, he said. It sounded like he was talking pig Latin or some kind of weird language. I don't understand you, I said. My thief, Grandpa, shouted Grandpa. If me back my thief, you little mover. Suddenly, the dawn came up in my brain. That's the way Grandpa spoke without his teeth, amazing and weird. You're asking me to give your teeth back to you, right? I said. Grandpa nodded his head, his hands still covering his mouth. Well, I said, you have to do something first. Puff, um, my poof, I need my poof. I translated that in my head. You need your teeth, right? Everybody needs teeth. But we're fighting a war here, remember? Oh, feeder, he said. Don't be that way, please. Nope, I said, war is war. Surrender right now or I'll never give you back your teeth. I mean it. Grandpa turned his face toward me then, and there was such a sad look in his eyes, it almost made me want to cry. Without his teeth, his mouth looked all pushed up, pushed in, and wrinkled. He looked so old and helpless. Just seeing him standing there like that, a person I loved as much as anyone in the whole wide world, I felt about as low as a worm's belly button. I can't explain what happened next. All I can do is tell what I did. I ran down the hall to the closet where I'd hidden his teeth. Then I came back in a minute and handed them over, still wrapped so neat in those soft tissue pa soft paper tissues. Grandpa took them and went into the bathroom, closing the door behind him. I heard the water running in the sink. Then he came out with his teeth back in his mouth, looking like my grandpa again. We stared at each other, not saying anything. I turned away from him and looked out the window across the street. Mr. Taub was mowing his lawn. The war is over, I said. I hope you'll forgive me for what I did. And if it makes you feel any better, I'm so ashamed of myself. I could curl up a ball in a ball and just disappear. Oh, Peter, Grandpa said, sighing. Maybe this is how wars get started and just go on and on, I said. Your enemy does something bad to you, so you do something worse to him. Then he gets you back, and you get him back, and the whole thing gets bigger and bigger and meaner and meaner, and in the end, someone drops a bomb. Isn't that the way it happens? Something like that, Grandpa said. Well, I said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have taken your teeth. It's my fault too, Grandpa said. Don't take it all on yourself, Petey. I started it, I said. And I let you, said Grandpa. I'm the grown-up here. I should have known better. But you know what? I enjoyed it. It was kind of fun. And I think I needed something to get over my sadness. Grandpa came up behind me as I looked out the window. I felt his big hands on my shoulders. Then his arms grabbed me and hugged me to his chest. All of us got off on the wrong foot, he said. Your parents took your room away and shut you up, Pete. That was mistake number one. Just because you shut someone up, it doesn't mean his hurt has gone away. There should have been a family conference or something like that, including me, and we could have figured out where I was to stay. That causes a lot of war wars too, Pete, not talking. I'll get used to living up here, I said. I'm real sorry I took your room away. Grandpa said, but I'm not sorry you came to live with us, I said. Grandpa hugged me a little tight at that and kissed the top of my head. You're a real sweet kid, he said, but a hard guy to fight a war against. 
I still lost, I said. Yes, said Grandpa, but only by the skin of my teeth.